You know, we all have that one special dog hanging out on the porch. He's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. All these things you like coming together to make one superb dog. That was exactly what we had in mind when we made this show. Welcome to All Mixed Up. Chad, I've recorded with you a bunch, and I'm pretty sure only two of those times I've seen you not eating in the beginning of the episode. You're a growing These boy. All, I got I got all my candy here. Your juicy bites. I don't even have to bring it. I don't have to bring it. I got I, my mandatory Coke, fruit snacks, and some kind of grain. This time I got cheese nips and juicy bursts. Chad, Chad juicy bursts Reynolds. <laughs> or cheese nips. That. Yeah, there you go. There hey man, go. how are you doing, buddy? It's been it's been a month. Oh, been busy trying to get everything situated. Um, going on a hunt here in a little bit, you know. Um, I mean, trying to get everything ready, and this blow sand came in, man, and and buried my fence to where like a toddler could run across the six wire bob wire without even slowing down. So all, it's all this blow sand. It's like like Saharan desert type stuff. Oh, you know? it's, it's my backyard. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, but it's <laughs> it, it's allowing my cows to walk over the fence. This is oh. not a good thing. So I've been out there for a few days trying to dig it all out. You're using machinery, right? Not your hands, I hope. What's that? I hope you're oh, using no, no, machinery. Oh, no, no, no. I got the tractor. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Using the tractor. and uh, But in doing that, I broke the bob wire. Like, oh, God, because I'm trying to get as close as I can. And I'm, I keep nicking it, you know, and then I'm breaking uh, it. Oh, so, yep. Uh, some of my guys are ready to kill me, you know, but... <laughs> It's it's part it's part of it, you know. So anyway, I raced in. And I, I borrowed a trailer, getting ready for uh, this hunt coming up, and borrowed a few extra dogs, and then raced in and handed them off, and dove in here, and here we are, you know. So that's how I've been, man. Photo <laughs> <What> finish. About- <laughs> yeah, I've been uh quite the opposite. I got off work today, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna hang out and write in my diary from last season and get that all figured out and finished up. And uh, I'm gonna just uh, drink soda hunt, and wait for Chad. <laughs> like a hunt log or yeah so um i took great inspiration from bart hoag's hound log but that was kind of more geared to scent hounds so i modified it for sight hounds and i used it and then i was like you know what i'm just gonna use that format that template in a digital setting and then all the pictures that i take and videos that i have i take stills from the pictures or um you know add those pictures to this like digital log book and so i mm-hmm. make these like full scale beautiful like books to that have all these like log entries data to help me remember everything honestly but then also you know dozens of pictures so the from every race so i want to yeah do you, i'll show them you to you on, like do you, I, I, that's awesome man yeah that's they, that sounds really cool we got to call it like a book of death or the <laughs> book of death <laughs> yeah it's um it, it has uh well to non hair coursers like so those books are on my bookshelf right there in my like living room and anyone who sees him like, man, this is a great idea. Cause you know, David Heiss, a, a real inspiration of mine, he's been coursing for like 70 years. And he's like, dude, I wish I was doing this from the beginning because he's had hundreds of dogs, you know, over his lifetime. And imagine all the crazy races he's seen in 70 mm-hmm. years of hunting, dude. Mm-hmm. And so and I got all the pictures and videos. It's, it's in a giant closet. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, I, I, I can't. You know, I don't remember the dates for sure. I can remember the picture many, many years later. You'd be but amazed with the hunt. You know, yeah, how much your mind messes everything up over time. To witness witnesses are are terrible. That's like that's the first thing. It keeps you honest, man. Like you don't want to get that dead or the better feeling. So you go back through those books and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, Calypso. She had her fair share of spills besides just dominating. I just remembered her do- dominating everything in the early race. Well, guess what? She also also did pretty good in the middle too. And like, or, or whatever, it, it helps keep you straight, you know? And, and, uh, I, I really love it. So I'm, I've been so busy this summer. Normally I have them completely wrapped up before the season starts. So I'm racing to kind of get it done, um, and get it published before this season starts. And then I'm going to be more diligent about, you know, kind of working on it as I progress through the season next year. So, um, so, oh, it's, it's, you say publish, is it, somewhere well i mean just publish for me right i make a copy for me i make a copy for my dad he really likes him too so yeah um, that's awesome 
Yeah. So anyway, guys, if you're out there listening, just uh, remember to take write things down. Just write it down because you will enjoy reading that in five years. I promise you. I promise you. And take pictures. My wife had to force me to take pictures when I first started doing this. And dude, now I can't leave without my camera, man. Like, it's the best. And on that note, uh, I guess it, uh, the way I can kind of relate to that is uh, my old terrier, Bea. You know, one of my old Yag Terriers, Bea, that was, you know, I had so much fun with. I got her. Her first name was actually Sanity. <laughs> Believe it or not, I named her Sanity. I came back from overseas and I was in a place I really didn't enjoy like my you know i was like out of sorts i'm a southern boy that was stuck in like massachusetts and uh hmm. at, that's where my wife got into nursing school and i came back you know i went from like 24 hours from my afghanistan kabul afghanistan to to uh you know cape cod massachusetts you know and <laughs> and i i was just not having it man so i got the dog and i was i named her sanity just like while my wife was getting through nursing school before i could get you know get get back down to somewhere that i was you know more more my style and i videoed a lot with her that's when i really started recording everything like well as a you know as a child growing up and a young man and everything before the military i didn't record i didn't, I didn't do any of that stuff you know and then once i did with Bea, now that she's gone she died she's passed in like 15 years or something like that and all our old retrieval video, I would pay with those with crisp one hundred dollar bills and be yep. satisfied, you know. Yep. So I'm so grateful I I recorded that kind of stuff. The videos uh, that we take of our dogs running, me and Justin have watched those videos at least five hundred times each. You know, what I mean, yeah. it's like you have it down, you have it memorized down to every like RPM of the vehicle and every cheer. It's, it's they're gold. They're just gold. So yeah, I can people, see how your book there, your diary could uh really you know just add that much more it's like yeah. a, that's a, you're you know, reading more. it and then you're looking at those pictures and it just comes alive in your head again you're like oh man deep down in that reptile brain you actually remember more than you think if those pictures are there to kind of supplement it so um no problem. do that peeps we got a great episode this month you guys um this theme for this month is going to be your first season speaking of this this was a very appropriate segue my friend because the two guests I have lined up for two little segments or short segments that are one person is completely new to the lifestyle of, of right. coursing hounds. And the other has done it a few seasons and has kept detailed log of his experiences and is still completely new, a newbie and is trying to iron out a pack of young dogs. So he just lost his like 13 year old track starter and now is starting fresh with a whole new set of youngsters. And so it was just it kind of recording with these fellas. And I haven't been doing it this long. But mm -hmm. recording with those guys really came back and made me think about how all those feelings when you were new. Take a second, everyone listening, and just even if you got to pause it and just think about how you felt when you just started doing this. All that feeling, the nervousness, the anxiety of, you know, I guess the butterflies, the excitement, the freshness. I mean, it was really fun. And as much as I love talking to people that have been doing it for a long time, there is something that's really exhilarating about talking to people that are excited to get started. So yeah. we got to enjoy those two segments, you guys. But we also, as always with All Mixed Up, have our own segments. And, uh, you know, um, I got a good one for Keeper Cole this month. I, I'm just going to say it right now. I was uh, I was cracking up when I read it. So I'm going to bring right. it to the people, but I'm going to ask you right off the bat, Chad, do you remember what you felt like when you were first starting? Let's pick, cause you do everything, man. I I'm going to read in your obituary that you were hunting like earthworms with like <laughs> chihuahuas or something. But what do you remember what you first felt like when you started pig hunting with dogs, when you were just getting going, what did, what, how, what was it like? And what's changed since then? The only thing that it would be kind of hard for me is because I started in and out of it at, at a younger age, you know. Um, so it was kind of always there, to be honest. You know, I don't I don't really remember starting, starting, you know. Um, it was kind of always just a part of it, dogs, you know, and the animal training. And then my dad was out of hunting for a long time and then kind of got backed into it, you know, and that's what got me started a little bit. Um, yeah. It was super exciting. I liked the dogs. I wanted to be their buddies more than anything. You know, I was just happy to be out there doing something. And as the, the excitement kind of came a little bit later, as 
you know, the, the thrill of the chase and the, and the hunt and, you know, like the energy and all that, you know, pursuing game with dogs kind of took hold a little bit later. But in the beginning, I was just happy to be out in the woods with my buddies, you know. Yeah. Um, we could have had fun in a mud hole and I went enough <laughs> better, you know. But, uh, but then new venues came on. So I'm very familiar with what you're saying, you know, like, like but pig hunting specifically has kind of always been there, you know, but then getting into, you know, uh, falconry or bird dogs, or ah, stuff, yes. hounds, the tree hounds, you know, like all of those are just uh, various forms of, I don't know, like almost like an addiction to be honest you know like it's so powerful it's overwhelming in the beginning you know that it's hard to think about anything else and you're just starving for every little scrap of data you can find on the subject and like it's almost you kind of like start to make up your own mind about things you know <laughs> it, the arc is there you know it's always the arc I, I, gosh i you know it, it, time and time and time again and come coming from a guy who's done quite a lot of it he's more than i probably should you know like I've seen myself do it so many times, but now if you were to like, Hey man, I you know, like, we're going to pay you to get into sled dogs. I'd be like, all right, Chad, just shut up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a dang thing. Just shut up and learn for the first like two or three years. Cause it's not until then that you really know anything, you know, like in, in, in my I opinion. agree. Yeah. yeah. And like, a good mentor will just change everything for you because i was already kind of making up my mind i walked into coursing completely ignorant and uh i didn't even know there was a community in this world that did it still and mm -hmm. when i met justin it just catapulted me forward <laughs> in a way that was very helpful because i mean he was like no that's stupid don't do that and he's so <laughs> nice you know what i mean he'd be like well if you want to try you can but i don't recommend it are you trying to reinvent the wheel yeah, yeah like, and and he was like you know man why do we do that <laughs> i know i know and 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 i've gotten to the point i know it's you don't want to be like oh just the status quo forever but at the same time it's like especially something like coursing it's been going around for ten thousand years at least i yeah, think we kind of figured out after ten thousand years you know what i mean mm -hmm. so um yeah, I guess that's what I was going to, when you, when you first started falconry, like take falconry, that's such a niche thing that is so unknown. You know what I mean? That's a lizard with feathers and you, that thing could just leave you. I mean, what, oh, when yeah. you, when you first started, do, do you, what was your biggest fears? Uh, the, the, the bird leaving, you know, just flying off without yeah. anything. And it happened. It really? happened. I got that it back. I got it back. Yeah. It was like, because there's always this big push, and it's a weird thing in the falconry that they want. Ideally, you want your bird as fat as they can be, and still and still hunt. So, like, so everything's the number. Oh, your bird's twelve hundred grams. Oh, well, mine's twelve forty five. You know, like, oh yeah, well, mine's thirteen. So everybody walks around like they're, you know, number hunters. You know, with the weight of the bird, and it doesn't really matter. You know, like how you perform, the health of the bird. You know, the performance of the bird. That's that's what matters. You know. So going into it, I just wanted the fattest bird, the biggest bird, you know, because that's what everybody else was like hanging their hat on before I knew that that didn't mean anything, you know. Um, so I wanted the biggest bird and we went out there and the bird knew the lure, which is the thing you like. Mm -hmm. It's a get out of jail free card. Oh, it's flying off or, oh, it's not hunting anymore or something scared. it. Okay, how do I get my hands back on this animal as fastly, as, as quickly as possible? And it's the lure. You swing around this little stuffed animal on a string that roughly looks like a rabbit. And it, I know a person that uses dog toys and he just zip ties food to it. It, it. it could be whatever. And I took it out and the bird looked at it and then flew away. Oh no. <laughs> flew away. And I spent like the first few hours, like chasing this thing around, trying to get close enough to it. And that's the problem. Like it did have a good lure response as long as I was within like a hundred yards. You know, but being ignorant, I didn't know I needed it to be like, you know, 500 yards away, you know, because yeah. you look, different. at least the birds, you look different at different distances, you know, like, and I couldn't get close enough for my lure response to work, you know, and I just chased it around and I get underneath it and I have my lure out and I'm like trying to be as subtle as possible. Don't look at it, you know, because we got predators. <laughs> so I'm like trying to look down at the ground, but like glance up at the tree and throw this thing. And he doesn't come down, so I like ease up to it and like slowly bend over and pick it up and throw it another ten feet, and then like is gently throwing something as you can, you know. And uh, 
<laughs> and it, it, it whenever I threw it, it would spook it. But when I held it, it would kind of do that little head uh, bobble thing. Yep, yep. Again. I'm interested. So like it's hilarious. My wife like like she was heartbroken for me when this was going down, of course. But like at the same time, she was cracking up because at some point I I realized it. So I started trying to show it in my hands. You You're know, like, I have hey. hands, you know, and, and she realized it. Hey, it's every time you throw it that you're scaring it, you know? So it's like, I'm, <laughs> so anybody walking by would crack up because there's some bald guy, right? <laughs> out in the middle of the woods, like creeping up to like this sole tree out in the middle of the field. There's nothing else around it. And I'm, I'm holding up like Simba from the Lion King. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this like little fuzzy stuffed animal, you know, it like, a, like it looked like a two liter bottle with rabbit fur, oh. you know, and some meat on it. And I'm like holding it up in this Simba. <laughs> you know? Oh and, man, uh, everyone's hearing it, the Lion King, th- Lion King theme song right now in their head. <laughs> if I could sing, I'd sing that thing right now. I promise, you know. Uh, but it, it I'm would not going to ruin it on like, air. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds something roughly like cats mating, like underwater. It, it'd be bad. <laughs> but I finally got him to like bobble his head and bobble his head, and I like dropped it, you know. And he bobbled his head even more. So I was like, okay, I'm going to turn around. And I walked away, and it came down. And I just like creeped in and creeped in and creeped in and then clipped the leash to its anklet, you know? And then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> I just laid there. I didn't even move. I just laid there with my head in the mud and let him eat. Like, I got you. You can't get away from me. And then we lowered the weight and everything was fine. But man, that was, that was horrible. This is dumb, know. but you lower their weight so that they're hungry to have an incentive to return to you, right? That's right. It's all okay. about numbers with them. Like, dude, you'll find a window and everyone's like, oh, you starve it? No, 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 no. Just like I said, that that like where I would throw something at it and it didn't want to come down and eat and it, or it flew away, a, a starving bird, like let's say it's sick and I didn't notice it. You know, a starving bird acts the same way. So a fat bird that's too fat to want to hunt is afraid of you and non-responsive to the lure. And a starving bird, you know, that for whatever reason, some health issue or it spent the night out and you couldn't get the food into it. So not on purpose is what I'm getting at. And uh, those birds won't come down either. Sometimes they're just, they're non-responsive. And I guess that's nature's way of like, save your energy. Don't chase anything fun, you know, like wait for you to kill, you know? So fat birds like, nah, I don't want to risk getting hurt. I might not be able to catch that. I'm fat right now. So I'll just wait for something easy. Then as the weight lowers, they get into the window where they're like, yeah, I'm going to kill anything I can chase right now. And then as they proceed past that, now they're getting into starving, hungry, then they're like, wait, wait, wait. You only have so many calories left. Don't yep. burn it. That's preservation. Too fast. Yep. That's too fast. We're waiting for like a buck tooth mouse with a broken leg to come across. <laughs> you know, I'm just gonna fall on top of it. Stand here. I'm waiting for those hairs too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, like just just wait for an easy kill to kind of like crawl underneath my tree. I'm gonna fall on it and eat. So, oh, man. That's so there you go. So we just lowered their weight down to his weight window. Took like ten grams off and. You know, we were blasting rabbits like the very next day. So it worked oh, out awesome. great. Awesome. Awesome. What was that? What kind of bird was that? That was a red tail. That's, oh, nice. Uh, those things are, everybody has to start with them or like a kestrel, depending on your state, more or less. Some of the Southwest states allow you to start with Harris's, but red tails, good old red tails are like a, like an American pit bull, you know, like they're just, they're so going to be okay. Just about <laughs> anything that, you know, if they get a hold of it, it's theirs, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> they might not be able to catch anything, but you're really not worried about, you know, this critter fighting back or that they're the biggest dog in the, in the woods, short of like Eagles, you know? So yeah, I mean, go and the thing about red tails, they're so, so versatile. I mean, they're just such mm-hmm. a successful generalist animal that lives all over the Northern hemisphere. They're just, really successful animal <laughs> and yep. so that makes sense i think it it seems that all those starter birds are generalist species in the wild kestrels peregrines red tails golden eagles they're just like these ultra generalist animals that really can survive in a lot of different terrains and stuff so mm-hmm. anyway makes perfect sense hey we're gonna we're gonna move into keep a call now or what yeah definitely do you, like you got anything to tell me about when you you're starting your first year oh man i mean this is how silly it man this is embarrassing <laughs> you don't want to tell i'm you gonna got... tell i'm gonna tell people i almost honesty, lost my bird you know I mean... <laughs> this is how dumb this is how this is how, okay so i started at night with a pit bull pointer cross okay and 
I know for a fact that she was totally outclassed in the daytime, but at night she was fine. She actually could stack them up at night, but that's like, whatever. That's like you saying you walk into a middle school and start beating down on kids. Like it's whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, when I first got my first sight hounds, I got them from a gentleman named Dean Bohannon, who's like a really famous long dog breeder and hot blood breeder in Texas. And I was like, what if I got, like Dean was so cool. I had literally no reason whatsoever to suspect I got gypped or anything like that. But I was like, what if these puppies like don't have a double suspension gallop? Like what if they're super slow? Like what if something's wrong with them? Like what if I don't train them right? Or like, what yeah. if I don't, I, I just had no idea that it was, it could be as simple as just like walk them out into a field and show them a jackrabbit and let their genetics do the rest. You know? <laughs> and so and that's exactly what I did. I just showed them as many rabbits as humanly possible from the age that they was appropriate to start letting them run. And they kind of just t- showed me how to be a courser, you know, and then I met Justin pretty soon after I got Pronto when he was still a little baby and Calypso and uh, that kind of changed my life too. So, but, you know, I felt so just like, what am I messing up? I had no, I- I'm a confident guy for sure. Um, but I just had no, I have no dog hunting people in my family. I had nothing. I was going completely alone. So I just had no idea what I was doing. I was just blundering around. So when you, when I met someone who's been doing it for like 50 years, it's a mm-hmm. huge comfort when he's like, oh no, you'll be fine, man. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Yeah. That feels great. You know, yeah. don't do this, do that. And I'm like, all right, cool. Well, you want to just hunt every weekend? He was like, yeah, sure. And then that started an addiction of friendship mm-hmm. and rabbits. <laughs> so, but basically mine was just a, you know, very anxious and excited for the future. And, uh, it's a simple thing. Just show them, show them the fur and they'll get after it. I hear you. Let's roll <laughs> right into keeper call, man. I know you got one and I got one. Do you want to start? Or do you want me to start? Uh, you, you go first. I think, uh, I, I'm excited to hear it. You know, I don't, I don't really know if mine's going to be very good this, this, this time, but I want right. to hear your. Here's my keeper call. All right, everyone. You guys know we're keeping her calling. Uh, we give our scenario about a dog and we decide, would you keep it? Would you call it? This one is a hunting partner. Had an interesting ride in to Houndsman XP to be remaining anonymous by request <laughs> because it has to do with people. Chad, keep or call. <laughs> You're in a bear rig. You're rigging all day long. But your partner has a combination of horrid breath and won't stop dipping the grossest wintergreen dip you've ever smelt in your life. So we're talking rotten halitosis mixed with wintergreen in that cab all day. Now, you like this person. You do. Mm -hmm. You guys are buddies. You guys have hit it off good. You keeping or you calling that friendship? Gosh, you'd think that the wintergreen dip would help. You know, like... (laughs) I think that helped, but I guess this is bad enough to where it is not. It's like putting a little potpourri on a, a rock. <laughs> uh, 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 I guess is what you're trying to say. Right. It was made clear to me that it was the halitosis far worse than the wintergreen. But this was a yeah. non-tobacco user, I asked. So mm-hmm. uh, it was extra gross. But he, he, this person was like, hey, this other, my hunting partner is a very cool person. And I was really enjoying their presence. But Gosh. man, that was just rank. <laughs> I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it, but I'm serious. Hold down yeah. the windows. Like up here, it's cold more than it's hot. Th- that's you know? the problem. Yeah. It freaks to death, you know? Like <clears throat> maybe just find different rides. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like what kind of, can you say what venue? Would that be giving away too much? You know, are we talking side hounds? Are we talking tree so, hounds? This was, this was, this was bear, bear rigging. So ah, but there you go. Just get tell him to get in his own damn truck. And then you can <laughs> stay in the friendship, you know, like come up with a reason, you know, yeah, like yeah. just I, I got it. I got it. So you show up the next day and your passenger seat's just gone. I, I don't know what <laughs> I I was there when I went to bed, but I you know I got up in the morning, it was gone. I oh, there's so much angry. crime here at Bear Camp. Oh yeah, you know, like so you might as well take your truck, man. We gotta we gotta go. No, I don't want to ride with you. I uh Hey man, um, have you tried this new uh these these new um tic tacs? They're off the chain, man. They're like <laughs> extra strength wintergreen, bro. Or whatever. They actually won't mess with the flavor of your dip too. I love them. You want to try? 
Yeah, see, I, see you, that might work because people say bubble gum, but if it's really bad, every time they like smack their, you know, exactly. like, smack in their mouth, you know, it makes it. You got to keep them lips. Got to be Altoids or Tic Tacs or something. Oh, maybe super glue. You know. I had but, a good friend, a really good friend of mine. We called him Crazy Ken, but he had like a phobia of having gross breath. So that dude oh, yeah. would like every 20 minutes, like like spray this like very potent, like minty stuff in his mouth. And I maybe mean, he that, had an issue growing up. I mean, he probably like, did. You don't get that kind of pathology by just guessing, <laughs> nope, you know, nope, nope. but he always had unbelievably minty, fresh breath. And I was like, <laughs> I really appreciate it. That's the kind of person I want in my bear rig. <laughs> Give me a sniff, man. Just, me... <sighs> I'm going to say, because it would sound like it was a new friendship being cultivated. I'm going to say, dude, I'm nice. I'm going to say keep, bro. Dude, I am. Yeah. You're a good I, guy. Can, I can deal with it, I guess. I mean, I will say after we become friends, because I have a coworker who had rank, disgusting feet. And I put up with it for like three months. And then eventually after we got comfortable with each other, I was like, bro, you got to deal with these feet. They are rank. I would do the same thing with this dude's breath. I would. I would. I'm a man enough to be like, yo, you got something in your teeth. Or, hey, bro, your breath smells like a dead animal mixed with tobacco. <laughs> like, So just, I, I'd say keep. I, 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 you say keep. I say cold to a second. <laughs> Not a hard cold. You know what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? soft call. Soft we're not call. going out with a away. shovel here. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to soft call this one. To, You're going to give him away to a new home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You know, sterilize him and find him like a pup train home. You know, like, <laughs> I, I swear to God, I tried the vehicle thing. Bro. Oh, <laughs> I tried the so vehicle weird. thing, but like, bro, I don't know what happened. I, I woke up this morning, the passenger seat was gone. Hey, man, I think you'd learn a lot more if you rode with Bob. You know, he's yeah. got a lot more knowledge that I just don't, you know, I don't know. I'm not really talkative, you know, <laughs> can't smell nothing either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He had nose surgery, man. He's got a yeah. nose like, um, like, uh, what's, what's his name? Um, the, the guy who sang thriller. Oh my God. The King of pop. Why can't Michael, I think? Michael yeah. Jackson. He's got a nose like Michael Jackson. It just pop up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a snap on tool. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I, I say, I say, uh, um, a man up and keep until unless the friendship doesn't cultivate out and then it's a hard call. We're gonna get the then hard call. Yeah, fair enough. Fair You're enough. doing I'm... a soft call. <laughs> All right. Well, then here, here's here's one. Uh, it's kind of I'll go with your your human keeper call. So I had I've had a lot of folks, you know, because I use like weird dogs to do different stuff, like having the draughts with a with the big game hounds and stuff. Uh, I get a lot of folks that are like, Hey, can I come and bring this? And I'm always like, Egh. you know, like just because I do it with mine doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. So I've always been really shy and not meaning that I'm better. It's just that I've worked towards that goal. And a lot of the people have worked towards a different goal and then it, it may not work out the same way, you know? Right. And, and, and that'll kind of lead into what my, my few f- rules, hard rules for my dogs are. You need to come when I call you. You need to shut up when I tell you. No dog fighting, and don't crap in the dog box, or you know, crap accordingly. You know, like <laughs> yeah. we don't want a water bucket issue. We don't want another dog box. Not we, the water bucket. You know, you know? defecate so, appropriately, please. Appropriate Thank you. defecation. Yes, those are those are my four. I'm going to get that favorite. sign made for your kennels. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> appropriate defecation is required <laughs> only. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this guy that I really like had a great following with this particular venue and I'm going to, I'm going to stay out of what breed this is, you know, but this particular venue had a hell of a following was notorious for being a great trainer and having a solid dog or dogs and, and all this stuff. And he wanted to go, you know, and I was like, Hmm, you know, all right, well t- tell, talk to me about this stuff. And he's like, Oh no, I, my, my dog would do that. He, he'd definitely get into that. You know, he, you know, I was like, Oh yeah. How do you know? He's like, well, I went out doing this before with another guy and, you know, their dogs were tree and my dog went up there and just whooped every dog off the tree, you know, and then oh, none of those dogs would even would even come next to the tree. You know, like he claimed that tree. I'm like, you know, like supposedly it jumped and the dog jumped on it and like tore a bunch of hair out, you know, like it pulled the hair going to the next tree and treed. Well, so, I mean, supposedly this dog treed well and everything, but like the the brag here was that he whooped the other dogs off the tree and i was like how could did you did you think about that one before amateur you, hour i'm not even you know, a tree dog guy you, that one, you know like did you really 
Because, I mean, the, the, the fellas should have enough dog knowledge to know that, like, we don't want that to happen. You know, that's a nightmare, you know, oh. like a bunch, a bunch of hard charging tree hounds, like just ripping into each other. Like at the bottom. Gosh, you know, and it's a self rewarding behavior. So once one starts fighting and the other starts fighting and then you could you could have a pack of dogs ruined by one dog, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I just immediately like, well, anyway, before I give my my answer, you know, like and that was a. And I thought I had a lot to learn from this gentleman. And I still do. I just find other ways of getting the data without him coming out to any of my bear trees, you know. But uh, well, if you had to make the decision right then. Everybody yeah. makes mistakes. Everybody says dumb things. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say first off, that dog wouldn't be within a thousand years of my pack. Yeah. Okay. First off. Secondly, if this dude is cool and we have a rapport together. I would be like, hey man, you're dumb. <laughs> but if 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 I just met this guy, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be rude, but I'm gonna soft call, walk off, and just be like, you got a lot to learn. Maybe in like three or four years, we we can reconnect. You know, I'm I'm just gonna walk away because everyone says dumb stuff. We've all done it, right? And we've all been grossly uninformed. So I'm never rude. You know what I mean? Never. Yeah. But oh yeah damn i would just be like i'm not about this at all and i'd i just do co- a, yeah i'm no, not you, soft yeah. coal soft coal human hard coal dog <laughs> yeah there you, there you go and that's that's kind of what i did i was just it was because i really wanted to learn from this gentleman about like this other venue like which he is very skilled at you know and he was just all about bringing bringing his his uh little dog you know out and i wanted to do it and it just, when he said that oh i whooped all the other i was like oh i yeah, I'll let you know when I'm going, man. <laughs> you know, like how, and I just found ways out of it. I didn't, yeah, want to be, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to stomp it down, but I was just, I, no, not happening, you know. Yeah, and right. uh, we still actually have a pretty good relationship. We just never, he's never come to the bear tree, you know. So, yeah, so, I mean, that's, yeah, that's where just, I'm at too. That's where I'm at too. <laughs> but, but yeah, that dog definitely never came out, and and the guy. He just hasn't either. You know, I even offered one time when I knew it couldn't happen. The dog got hurt and like needed surgery. So he's down. And I was like, hey, <laughs> now's the time. You know, <laughs> yeah, going next yeah. weekend. You know, you're already but, coming. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, keep, there you go. That's, that's keep, mine. That's Keeper mine. Cole has been a, a perennial favorite. I actually have gotten messages, more messages from fans about an episode of All Mixed Up from Keeper Cole segment of your dog crapping and then black <laughs> crapping in the yeah. water than yeah. any other that was amazing so uh folks i want to hear some keeper calls on the houndsman xp group about the dude with bad breath and the dude with the pit bull at the tree <laughs> because i thought about that for quite a while and uh it it just uh it felt natural to to be nice about it but then to to slip away slip yeah. away so do you do you want to buzz through a dog one then real quick because i guess we both did kind of people real quick i i can yeah, I got, I, you got a dog. I, I got, one. Bring one, it I got up. one more. Heck I got yeah, a I up. got a dog that I was helping train. Okay, and uh, it was great hunting. No aggression in its body. Would retrieve. Was kind to other dogs. Everything, absolutely everything. Uh, fine in the yard. Fine in the hunt. Fine everything. And uh, but was uh, a dog aggressive? The males in the uh, dog box. Fine with females. That's something. Uh, it was a male that was dog aggressive to other males. You can mm-hmm. stick him in there with a pile of females. Um, everything was absolutely fine. He'd even get whooped, you know, and, and wouldn't retaliate, you know. But males, he was just ornery. How good of a hunter? Ornery on him. The dog was a showstopper, man. Oh, that's yeah. a good question. A really, really good dog, but was was a hound and mm-hmm. was dog aggressive to males in the hound box. And there's, Do you I think, think neutering more him would have changed that behavior? I do not. I do not. Mm, I do not. Pathologic. I I think that was just, he saw males as competition and, you know, and we can, what's the word? We could speculate all day, Mm -hmm. you know, but we really don't know why. We just know the behavior. And the behavior is this dog hated males. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I'm going to say this. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. Do we need any more supplemental information? No, that's a, that's about it. You know, I can to tell me, you how I worked around it, but like, eesh. clearly, you kept. I did. I did. I and did. Me too. Um, a showstopper, mm-hmm. son. This guy's just going to be a ladies' man. Screw it. If he's that good, 
There's no question. Now, do you think he would fight if he was exhausted, tired? Because I've seen dogs that are not friends at all. But when then you get them out on a tough rabbit and they catch it, they don't fight at all. They get that Tried. stupid energy out and then they're fine. And I've even yeah. hunted, I've hunted two males with a female that just came out of heat and they didn't care at all about mating with her. They wanted to hunt, man. Mm -hmm. And so that made me happy too. So I guess if you think if you, if he was really badass, if you started a track with him, you think that once he got focused and got that dumb energy out, he'd probably not fight. You said it was in the box only. So for I, me, the tree, he would fight. You, you'd have dogs, puppies fall on a bump into it. He didn't care nothing about it. Gotcha. He was totally, fine. Oh, it was hard just in the dog. Hard keep, yeah. easy just stuff the dog, in there bro. with the ladies. <laughs> and, and well, what I because that's actually why he came it was because of the dog aggression. He was like, "Man, could you, you know, like take a look at this, you know?" And it was his off season and my on season, so I was like, "Sure, why not?" You know. And uh, I tried all my tricks exactly that. I wrote him till he could probably not even stand right and put him back in the box with a very soft male, you know, just to let him try to build a routine. Mm -hmm. And it was almost honestly, it was almost like he was grouchier. It was almost oh, he's like, get worse. away from me because then he was like intolerant you know whereas the anticipation of the hunt almost like might have helped maybe you know mm -hmm. but then after he ran he just was intolerant of everything don't don't eat you're breathing on me <laughs> i'm gonna fight you you know so yeah. uh, what ended up happening is uh the guy just rigged him every time you know like even in even in lines when he wasn't playing in the rig he put him it. up front yeah. and then when it was super cold he put him in the passenger seat with him i was gonna uh, say uh, yep yeah yeah. So, but he was his track starter. That's, that's what it was. So, so there you go. I kept, I even told him I'd keep him. I was like, man, this is an amazing dog. You need to, you just need to deal with this. You know, even my, my new box that I made now has like a big bay with two backsides, but I have a single up in front. What's this just, dog's name? I, I'm not, I, uh, I'm, Secret. no, no, I'm not. <laughs> one of those things. We, I feel like I could breathe these real world stories and share them with everybody. Yeah, as long as I do it anonymously, I don't want to burn any bridges. Well, you know? that was the thing about the the bad breath guy. The person was like, "Do not say any names and don't even yeah, no supplementary information at all." So the all details of that story that are not relevant to the breath have been fabricated by me. So everything, <laughs> everything was all false. All names have been changed to protect the innocent, except for the crux of the keeper call. So. Uh -huh. All right, man. <laughs> there you go. I don't that got a dog good. one. That was I fun. just when I read that one, I was like, "That's all I got." This is all Seth Hall needs. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. So I want to I want to move into um, our first segment, man. I think we'll just do them. Let's just do them back to back. Um, all right. The first one I'm going to run is my friend Nick Isaac, and Nicholas and I have talked many times on the Patreon page, you guys. And I want to say that when you hear this episode, go to last week. Or we yeah week before last, uh, part one of this conversation is on the Patreon page, and when you hear the second guest, my buddy who has just reached out to me as a fan of this show, and I was quick to help him out, Jake. Uh, we have a part two that is on the Patreon page. So as usual with all mixed up, you guys I like to keep the segment short. That's kind of the point of the show. But if you want to see mm -hmm. the hear the more extended conversation, join us on the Patreon page. It's all there. So we're going to start here with Nick. He's a young bobcat hunter. Uh, he's Me and him are kind of a bird of a feather, man. We're both uh, talkative, energetic guys that love to uh, hang out, have a good time, party a little too hardy, and hunt some dogs. So uh, <laughs> let's roll right into it, guys. Me and my friend Nicholas Isaac talking about bobcat hunting. Hi. All right, man. So I want to hear... What are your goals for this upcoming season? We've we've covered quite a bit. And uh, if you want to hear the beginning part of this talk, again, go check it out on Patreon, you guys. It's there. Nick, what do you got going on this season? What are your goals? Well, it's a great question. Um, I mean, my overall goal is to catch bobcats. Um, wow. <laughs> with my dogs <laughs> my so really this year you know i'm down i don't have whiskey anymore so i am down a finished dog which i guess i didn't really have her last year either um but yeah i'm i'm uh i'm just really flying with unproven bobcat dogs um my most promising prospect is rue 
and he's about three and a half years old. He's, uh, you know, my walker out of my mentor's dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, last year I really worked with him a lot on, uh, like rigging. So striking from the, from the truck. Right. Um, and I worked with him and Cooley on loading up, you know, loading up on top of the rig box, uh, on command. So I don't have to get out of the truck. Mm. <laughs> um, so basically I just, I pretty much freak. I, I rig, I drive tons of roads and I rig, but I kind of free cast them. So I don't chain my dogs up on the dog box. I've just had a couple too many bad experiences with them flying off and uh, yes. hanging themselves by the neck. I get why people do it. It just sketches me out. And I don't know, I have a good enough handle on my dogs that it's just like, I know they're capable of just riding up there safely without a chain on the, you know, yep. attached to them. So, um, yeah, I'm work. Rue is doing really good with all, all those kind of handling skills. And then he also started striking cats from the truck last nice. season. So that's the main focus is just really getting Rue rock solid so that he can help my younger dogs, you know, nice. get on Bobcats. How, how many young dogs do you have coming up? I know I asked you this earlier, but I can't remember. So I got three, one, one and four, you know, they're a year and four months old. Young so three Stewart indeed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got them on, I got them on, you know, handful of cats last year. Um, and yeah, but I mean, they're still super green. We're going to have to do a lot of trash breaking. That'd be another, that's a, that's another goal is to get those three dogs fully broke. Mm -hmm. Um, I had one opportunity. So last, it was either last week or the week before I just went out and rode the dogs, uh, before the season actually started and Tika took off on a deer race. Like, you know, she uh -huh. ran it like almost a mile. Um, but it was, it was good, productive trash breaking and she was, <laughs> she was the only one who took that track. So, um, did you know it was a deer? You saw the hooves or did you see the deer? I saw the hooves. I saw the tracks and I also saw the deer. Uh -huh. <laughs> I so, didn't, yeah. I, I, I managed to cut, I managed to cut her off. Uh, and I watched the, the deer, well, it was actually two deer, um, run across the road in front of me. So. Oh my God. Were you livid? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, it's part of I it. was, I was, I was so excited that Rue, I was so excited that everyone else came back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, true. Rue came because they all took off with her. And then within about five seconds, Rue and Cooley came back to the road. And then that, by that, by that time I got my alpha out and, you know, was able to tone them. Uh, and so then Clover and Bruno well, I guess Clover went with her for a while. Bruno came back. And so that was pretty awesome. That he came awesome. back just with a tone. I didn't have to shock him at all. Nice. Um, but I lit Tika up. Yeah. She <laughs> she got she got a big dosing of, yeah. yep. of juice. Of no deer. Um <laughs> what what command yeah, do you use that... when you when you're trash breaking? What command do you use? Because in, in British Columbia, Lloyd uses no deer. That's just his bad dog. No matter what they're doing bad, he says no deer and <laughs> it makes them work. It makes it, it works. Man, <laughs> really? I, 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 my theory, my philosophy on it is I'm going for like the, they call extinction training where they're just like, just wiping out that behavior completely. So I don't, I don't use any command. I just, I don't even tone. I don't even give them like a warning tone. Well, I guess I kind of do. I don't know. It depends. If I know for a fact they are, they just jumped a deer. I saw it happen. I'm not saying anything. I'm just hammering down on the stimulation. Yep. yep. Um. Until literally until they are back on the road. So however long that takes them to get back, <laughs> it might hurt a little bit. But <laughs> gotcha. Um, Can't yeah, be these no blue deer. dogs. <laughs> yeah these these blue dogs are quite a bit more difficult to break than Rue. Huh. I, I don't know what. The, but Rue is also he's a more he's kind of a more sensitive dog too. Uh, like he is he does not like getting in trouble. You know, like he he wants to be a very good boy. And yeah. I got three like of those. I got one stubborn one yeah. and I got three that are very well behaved. 
Nice. But yeah. yeah. Catching bobcats, get you know, roost striking, you know, and everything and You got a Doing young that, like pack, too. You got your work ahead of you. Not only are you young into this, but you got to start a whole yep. young set of dogs, man. You got a tall order oh, yeah. ahead of you. Yeah, I know. The The thing is, and I've thought about this a lot, like, I I have a dog hoarding problem. Like, I can't get rid of dogs. Well, like, that's I why just... you're sitting in your truck right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, But I also just like going out into the woods with my dogs. I, like that is what completely just going road, just roading them. Like that is 100% fulfilling to me. So everything else beyond that catching game is a bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I don't know that mentality. I feel like holds me back because I'm not very like competitive, like results driven. Like I'm not very, I don't know. It's weird. I just love being out there with them. And I like my happy place is sitting here in my truck, just putting down the road with all my dogs running in like the mighty ducks formation ahead of me. Yeah. It's so sick. I mean, I, I get what you're saying. And and that's, I mean, that's why we all do it. We love the dogs. You know what I mean? If I, I tell everyone, if I just wanted to kill stuff, I would just buy a bunch of chickens and wring their necks. You know, I, it's, yeah, it's so much more than that. And, and although I will say, I really love catching a hair. <laughs> but, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. But I know yeah. what you're saying, and I agree with your sentiment. Goals this year, get your pack, get your young dog, get your young old dogs, quote unquote, going. <laughs> yeah. And get your pups yeah. online. Yes, sir. Yep. Nice. 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 Yep. It's a... Uh, it's like a blessing and a curse starting young dogs. I enjoy it so much because the future can be so bright, but man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really just like rolling out with my four that are just trained assassins. You just I know. load up. They just jump in. We hit the prairie. They're all business. They jump that, that little furry missile and off they go. I love that feeling. I love that feeling. Oh yeah. But yeah, you know, if I was smarter, I would have, I would have not kept all these puppies. And but no, you can see what you got though. I know that's the thing. I can't like uh, it's so complicated. But if I was smarter, if I wanted to catch more bobcats, I would have done this completely differently. I would have not kept all these accidental puppies, and I would have taken up my mentor's offer of his older dogs that he's you know they're mm -hmm. like aging out of his of True. his pack because his pack is like like he's got you know. He's got like 10 roos, you know, 10, like three, you know, maybe not that many, but like he's got a bunch of like three, four year old, just like rock star cat dogs. And so his nine, 10, you know, eight, nine, 10 year old dogs, they just can't really keep up on those races. And so, you know, he has offered me these older dogs and I just like, can't really, I don't have any room for them. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? I mean? You're right. I mean, you want to develop your own dogs. I mean, whiskey may That's have it, given yeah. you a big help, you know, but at the same yeah, time, yeah. you may, you may thin down your herd and bring in some of those veterans when you, yeah. you know, really want to drive, or maybe you're going to, yep. Hey, you train your own pack and it gets to work in the way you want. That's going to be very prideful, man. Very rewarding. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, you know, like I said, there's just different ways to go about it. Yeah, um, for sure. My my mentor's son, he actually, he doesn't really hunt hounds anymore, but he used to be super into it. He's, I think, probably five years younger than me. But, like, he, I was talking to him one day, and he was like, yeah, if I was going to start over, he's like, I would, I would maybe, if I would have a pup trainer, if possible. But he's like, I would get, he's like, I would have a litter of puppies and keep all of them and just train them all at the same time to run cats. and. I don't, I really resonate, I resonated with that idea because it's like, it's like you're training a whole pack at the same time versus a sequel, you know, a series of individual dogs, mm -hmm. which I've heard most people will say you should only do, you know, only start like one dog at a time. Um, but I've actually heard from like a lot of fox hunters that they will keep a lot more dogs they'll they'll keep the whole litter 
and just run them because they're running 20, 20 dogs yeah, at a time anyway. Big packs. So it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I don't know. You, I mean, like I said, you, you took the hard way, no doubt. So I'm really curious. Oh, this, yeah. this episode has, <laughs> you're, you're no, you're, uh, you're definitely into this a lot longer than our, you know, our other guests for this episode, but I still, I'm really excited mm. because maybe we'll have a cat dogs chronicles two and three that we'll get to read about your progress because yeah, you got a, you got a door that is to be opened and it's going to be a tough one. <laughs> so I'm yeah, really, yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing about your progress. And if you're catching cats, call me, we'll, uh, we'll go make a big jamboree out of it. I know Charlie wants me to come back up there and, It'd be fun to get the beagles out and uh, tree a, a little spotted Oregonian forest <laughs> kitty. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, man. Yeah, we got to make it happen. See, the other that's kind of like my be- – I wish – see, if I, w- I wish we could just run other games, you know, like bears and lions. Because I feel like my dogs now – and I'm sure people are going to be like, oh, you're so ignorant. But I, f- I do feel like – like the bobcats are just so – tricky i've heard you say it before that you know you've it's the hardest thing to catch i've been um, told never speak, experienced myself that's what, <laughs> no exactly but you've talked to like you know very well experienced dudes and ladies i'm sure um but uh i wish i wish i could run other stuff too because you i feel like my dogs, dogs are talented i know yeah but it's like, do I want to open that can of worms? Because I can't <laughs> run the big game, you know, the bigger stuff out here. Yeah, yeah. And we have a lot of it. We have a lot of lions and a lot of bears. So if I'm, I don't know, I feel like it could set me back. Like I've thought about driving out to Idaho and, oh, you yeah. know, go hunt some bigger stuff out there. But it's like, was that going to totally screw me over? Right. You want special running bobcats specialists. here? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to it, man. And like I said, I, I've uh, if anyone's gonna do it, it's gonna be you. You got the energy, you got the enthusiasm, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we're gonna read about it in your upcoming book. Hey, I want to ask you, brother, is there anything you want to say to the Houndsman XP world while I got you here on the mic? Um. Um. Well, if I'm being self-promotional, everyone should go buy my book, Cat Dog Chronicles. It's on Amazon. And you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, those are my main things these days. But um, every, all, I, I, I get so bummed out by all the uh, – there's a lot of infighting that goes on in all of hunting, but hound hunting especially. I don't know. It seems like everyone's always pissed off at each other. So – I think we shall need to be nice to each other. I agree wholeheartedly, my friend. <laughs> I was blown away at that. I thought, oh, hey, all of us love hunting dogs. This is going to be awesome. And I yeah. must say, I think the majority of people are really cool. And most yes. groups that I've ever been a part of have actually been really rad and lots of cool people. But I also was surprised at how adults can be like children. So that's any group. Yeah. I agree. But I am with you. Can't we all just get along? And That's uh, right. And and also, World peace. deer hunters, we're your friends, okay? I'm going to say that, too. So, hey, That's right. Nick, thanks for joining yeah. me here on All Mixed Up, brother. You guys, if you want to hear the beginning part, we had 40-minute talk right before this segment. It's on the Patreon page. So go check it out, you guys. We really uh, appreciate you all there. And uh, Nick, you're the bomb, man. You've been a, you've been a friend of mine and a, and a loyal uh, – patron and guest on this show many a times brother so i can't thank you enough for joining me here and hey good luck this season we'll stay in touch thank you sir oh yeah one more thing everyone should go listen to the episode that i had you on on my podcast because i feel like that was a pretty good uh pretty good chat with you buddy hey i appreciate it man it was fun to be a guest and uh i really uh i was happy to it was fun to have the roles reversed so all right man well i'll catch you around and keep me in the loop buddy Sounds good. Talk to you later. See you, buddy. Bye. Bye. Guys, this is a no-nonsense podcast. You guys know that. And I'm going to talk to you about Onyx because I'm sitting in camp in New Mexico right now. I've never stepped foot on this ranch. And I've used Onyx so many times in the last three days. 
with their high definition maps, I can see mesas, I can see grasslands, I can see the canyons. I know where the critters ought to be living, and Onyx helps me find those spots and get to those spots, and it totally augments my tracking equipment. I could buy a map card for New Mexico, but this year alone I've hunted Louisiana, Indiana, Kentucky, uh, New Mexico. Uh, I didn't hunt in Colorado, but I was there. Montana, I've been in Montana. So you do the math on the map card, and when you buy Onyx at their elite price for around 100 bucks a year, I get all of these maps that are right on my phone, extremely clear landowners are marked state lands are marked it's all right there check out onyx at onyxmaps.com and get with it man and at checkout enter the promo code hxp20 and you will get 20 percent off of your onyx subscription know where you stand with onyx that's a cool guy man i really enjoy him he's uh he's just a he's a kook so when i when i uh Recorded the second half with him. He actually had to mm-hmm. be in his truck. Or when this time when I recorded with him, he was in his truck because he had two bitches in heat and a kennel full of males. And he lives in the city. Oh, so all his dogs are indoors right now to avoid the howling and the debauchery. Oh <laughs> so, gosh. That's rough. Yeah. I I man, I I I had one I had two hounds when I had a tiny yard. I'm talking tiny yard, like forty yards by twenty yards. And that felt like it was too much for me. Now that I got this five acre pen for them, I don't really care. But man, if you had a tiny yard, it would be tough to be a houndsman in the city. So kudos to all you guys that just make it work. I have a lot of respect for that. Mm -hmm. I had an intact male Belgian Malinois and two intact female Yag Terriers at one point when I was living in the apartment. Would they try to mate? uh, Oh, they tried all the time. Yeah. And uh, it, it, he chewed on the wildest things because he tried to be a good boy. He, he, he would really try and be a good boy, but it would like bubble out in weird ways. Like <clears throat> he took paper out of the printer and shredded it into like as so many frustrated. pieces as possible, just shredded it. And, uh, um, and th- this is the weirdest thing. So he shredded it in one spot, like in the middle of the living room, you know, and then there was like a grocery bag, you know, like it, this is like where we were living there. We actually had to pick up the poop. Oh God, it was horrible. You know, yeah. like with a bag, yeah. you know, like oh. immediately. <laughs> yep. So we had bags out there and he went and got a bag and pulled it over by the paper. He shredded and then peed on the bag and pooped on the bag in the middle of the, so like, I, I don't speculate. Everyone's like, Oh, well he needed to go ahead. Shut up. We don't know what the hell happened, you know, but like this dog was just coming apart at the scenes. <laughs> yeah. It caused- shred a bunch of printer paper and then pull a bag over and then pee and poop in the house on the bag you know now it missed you know but you yeah tell, yeah like, he was trying to mark it you yep. know and yep. so, so i you know, i got yeah, i got a mail so that hard. i got a mail that he goes insane when there's any kind of stimuli outside of the pen so like if someone's walking a dog down the road that's like 50 yeah. yards from the edge of my pen he'll just start shredding brush he does never yeah. bites the other dogs. He doesn't attack anyone. Sometimes he'll kind of like, rawr, rawr, like just kind of bark it around, bark but he's never it. laid teeth on anyone. But he will run mm-hmm. up to a bush and just start destroying it, like shredding <laughs> it. And I'm like, that's fine. Man. You take out your frustration on that bush. I don't care. So like along my fence row where they always stop to bark, all the brush is just chewed down. It looks like grazing animals have mowed it down. Yeah. So yeah. it makes me laugh because sometimes he'll bite into like a creosote bush and they taste horrible. And he'll be like, blah, blah, like spitting sharp it out. Too, aren't they? Huh? No, aren't no, they no. Mesquites are mesquites. Okay. He doesn't bite a mesquite bush. <laughs> That's the only thing he won't bite. So, but <laughs> it just makes me laugh. So, oh. I, uh, you know, keeping with the theme of fresh starts, it does not get any more fresh. And this is kind of what we were talking about in the beginning of the episode. Jake okay. reached out to me, and he just was like, "Hey, I live in, I live here in Texas. I just moved here, and I'm pretty sure where I live." is great running dog country. And I was thinking if it would be a good idea to get into it. This guy sent me a picture where he lives and my jaw like hit the floor. It's paradise. It's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Rabbitat. It's perfect. Habitat, rabbitat, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's magic. This guy's mm-hmm. so lucky. 
So, you know, as humbly as I could, I was like, Hey man, like, yeah, that would be awesome. So I actually helped him get in contact with a buddy of mine. Shout out to cash. Um, cash had a litter of nice hounds on the ground and he, uh, Jake went and got two. So you guys, this interview is a person who is excited, uh, has been hunting dogs his whole life, hunting a hog hunter, uh, run trap line dogs and stuff. But this is his first time getting into coursing. He had, had, well, you'll hear the story. Um, he was super cool guy, really smart, well-spoken, uh, a little nervous. You could tell a little nervous, but a uh, great, great guy. I really look forward to our friendship. And he is walking into an entirely new world. And so I was really excited to just kind of ask him how he felt about what he thinks it's going to be like and what he's most excited about. And again, you guys, the extended the extended part two is on the Patreon page right now. So uh, if you want to check it out, um, and I couldn't help myself. I geeked out about hairs just a touch. So <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So um, yeah, let's roll right into it. Everybody, I got a very special guest. Listen, I get reached out to by fans. You know, I'm not that popular, not as often as Chris, but I did get reached out by this gentleman here and we started an awesome dialogue and it has borne fruit. So why don't you introduce yourself, brother, and uh, tell us a little about yourself and why we're talking right now. <laughs> Great for the awesome intro there, Seth. Uh, my name is Jake Wagner. Uh, I'm in my mid four and I grew up in South Texas in what they call the brush country, Live Oak County, McMullen area. It's between Corpus Christi and San Antonio, a little closer to Corpus. It's not quite the coastal plains, but it's not the Edwards Aquifer area, hill country either. So that's where I grew up. Uh, and I migrated to Tongren County, which is around San Angelo, or is San Angelo, Texas, after college. But uh, I've got to know West Texas fairly well uh, after college years. But I have a good lot of memories in South Texas and a, and a lot of uh, dog hunting guys down in that area. That's where I I learned most of my dog skills down there. What were you hunting? Well, dad was packing me around at a very early age. Um, he's he's old South Texas cowboy, and we had uh, blackmouth curs and catahoulas for hunting cattle. And so that's where it all stemmed from. But then he had, a, you know, curs are a very versatile breed. Mm -hmm. So he had another pack of dogs when he wasn't cowboying, we'd go hog hunting and that put uh, food on the table for us. So we, and <clears throat> their style of hog hunting back then when I was a real young boy, and it even went into high school years that bulldog was almost a uh, bad word. You, those those guys did not dare use a catch dog. Why? I wasn't in. Why, sir? Why not? They they thought that they kill more hogs by just using a bay and pack. Hmm. They they shot over that they use. They rarely used anything over a twenty two magnum rifle. Mm -hmm. They as they were bayed up and shining lights, that sounder that they had, they they could shoot three, four, six pigs at a time. Whoa. Okay. Crazy. So they, you know, the catch dog was more they liked their curves a little rough, but not too rough to where they backed off out of the way and they were able to get good clean shots. That's cool. It didn't always happen that way, but 90% yeah. did. And so that's, they, him and that, that group of guys down there, that, that was their style of hog hunting. Hmm. Interesting. And yeah. So I've seen was, Bay and shooting and I've never, obviously I've never done it, but it does look pretty fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a blast. And, and then in, in later years, as I became a young adult uh, with my hog dog pack, I've, I've kind of bounced back and forth from just straight, De depend on what dogs I had on the ground, uh, I would bay, shoot over them, or sometimes I just like my big old rough gruff bulldog to go get a hole. You know, so mm -hmm. everybody likes that. Too, yeah. So 
definitely. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, but before kind of in the middle of that, I, you know, saw the, the movie uh, where the red fern grows, you know, and read the book and fell in love with that. And, and so I had a magazine, the, the coon hunter magazine back in the day before computers, uh, I, there was an ad in there in front, uh, they can't, I can't remember the kennel name, but they were out of Kentucky and this guy won contest after contest, not only a training contest, but he won on the bench too. So it was <laughs> grand, forgive me. I don't know the proper, it's been so long since I, but it was grand, grand night champion, blah, 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 bench champion stud and on. And, and so I ordered a puck <laughs> out of that magazine and, uh, uh, so I was coon hunting at a very early age down there around three rivers and running those river bottoms with those coon dogs. So I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. What did you love about it? Just how uh, the instinct and in a well-trained dog, how it all can come together. There's so many obstacles that can go wrong and how they can just figure it out. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. There was, there was nights I was kind of questioning myself, uh, down there because, uh, dad wasn't able to go with me all the time. He just turned me loose. And, uh, there's, it's alligator country down there too. So I, and those coons swim in the river back and forth. There was many nights that I wondered the safety of my dogs and, and myself, honestly. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and they had, <laughs> they didn't have as good a lights then as they do now. And so on a quiet river bottom down there, listen to those dogs figure it out and then tree and, and all the splashing and all the, all the noise that was down there. It was, it was truly amazing. I, I really enjoyed it and I miss it at times. Hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So you've, uh, you've changed gears a little bit now <laughs> from oh, yeah. that. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Well, tell us about your newest venture coming up. Well, I've, uh, my family has moved to the Southern high plains area of Texas, uh, South of Lovett, about 30 minutes. And, uh, I'm on this, I'm very blessed to be living on this big ranch and it has some big open areas. It's nothing like South Texas. So I, as a young boy, I, my grandma took me to the Corpus Christi Greyhound track. And uh, my parents let me adopt the Greyhound off the track. I've always had a liking for those sighthounds, but just never had the opportunity for use for them. And so we weren't going to be, the way I was brought up, we weren't going to be feeding anything that didn't help us out. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Anyway, dad let me adopt this greyhound and I did not know anything about sidehounds. And this greyhound, her feet were so soft. So I wanted to hit the, we had a couple of, forgive me for stumbling around, but we had some coastal hay fields um, where I grew up too that dad cleared off from brush and there was a lot of jackrabbits right there. So I was like, man, wouldn't that be cool to chase and catch one of those jackrabbits? It would so be. I thought <laughs> I had no, I had no idea that there was a core scene community somewhere else in the world that done, done it for a hundred years. Um, of course I was in my late, you know, 16, 15 years old then. And uh, so when her, it took a while for her feet to get toughness. Mm-hmm. Uh, to follow around um, that was a little just dis- discouraging there at first but eventually to my surprise she followed me out there to the coastal fields just a foot and we jumped jackrabbit up and and uh, I, don't, I don't remember a registered name was tennessee sandy sandra and i was like oh, i wish old sandy would have been here to see that and about that time i heard this noise and this this greyhound blew by me like a rocket and i was <laughs> yeah. like wow it was game on after that of course i was just hunting with one dog and of the thousand jackrabbits we jumped up 
you know now, now and I know now that it, it's almost impossible for one dog like that to catch it. Yeah, it's tough. It's really tough. Very tough. And so that that was a pretty good adrenaline rush watching Sandy run them jackrabbits through there. And of course, we didn't have big giant open prairies to run through, so there was some obstacles in the way. And so we had to have her taken in, sewn up from running through fences and broken toes and and eventually uh she broke a back hawk and she was three-legged she still ran them pretty pretty tough for a three-legged greyhound like that but um anyway that was my first experience with the side hound their and speed is I, insane isn't it it's like when you it, first see that it's just insane yeah it it is unbelievable it is truly awesome to see I get I get messages from people sometimes that are like, yeah, I wonder if like, you know, my hound will run with your dogs. And I'm like, I mean, they will run with them, but like a zip code behind, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's hard to describe that speed until you've seen it. It's just insane. Mm. And, a, and a track dog is the definition of power and speed. Wow. It's crazy, yeah. you know? Yes, sir. So. Yes, sir. Anyway, I geek out about it clearly. <laughs> yeah. Well, she, I went off to college and she got old and and uh, life happens and I never, never did have time to get another one, but it was always stuck in my mind. I, I need to, I would like to have another side hound like that. Uh, but just hunting hogs. I, I did have a buddy of mine knew a coyote coyote hunter and had some old stuff, old school greyhounds. He called them and crossed them with a dogo. And I had a hot, one of my catch running catch dogs was a Dogo Greyhound cross. And, uh, he, I, he was a pretty good dog, but just didn't fit my pack really that well. So, um, uh, I gave him back to my buddy and he, he got along with him fine. And then I just stuck with my hog dogs until I'm sold out. And I really don't want to go. I, I'm just kind of over it. I don't want to be stapling and sewing out my dogs anymore. Mm. So I, I, I stumbled across this being in this area. It's pretty and ideal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it really got me excited. I'm like, man, why hadn't I thought about this months ago? Uh, but now, now I'm on a, the bandwagon and I'm, I'm really excited and, and uh, future looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean it definitely does. So, I mean you you got a how you got two new runners, two new pups coming up, bred for hair coursing. You you have yes, a sir. you you have a dog right now that you thought maybe would be good for the job, but probably not. All um, right. But I am uh, very happy. We we you reached out to me and kind of asked me some general questions, and I was more than happy to help out where I could. You know, mm-hmm. and. uh Basically, I got you in contact with a guy I know and got you some dogs. And, and I think uh, you have a bright future ahead of you now. Because not only do you have the land, you have the space. But the difference between a dog that's bred for the track and that's bred to catch hares is pretty pretty distinct. You know, mm-hmm. I can look at a track greyhound and then I can look at hunting bred dogs and know the difference usually very quickly. Um, so you're going to have a lot of fun when those little guys grow up. So shout out to cash. Um, he had a nice litter on the ground and he was pretty close to you. So that worked out pretty good. Yes. Yeah, it worked great. I can't thank you enough. Um, uh, I had that lurcher and she just turned a year old and with my other old catch dog that I've been trapping coyotes and he's, he's kind of an all around dog. And I'm so glad that I, uh, stumbled across you and you've been guiding me in the right direction best i can <laughs> yeah I mean, you know to me what would really save me a lot of time and and heartache was having a great mentor and so um not that i'm a great mentor but i do have a great mentor and i've been surrounded by a lot of people that have been doing this for decades and so they kind of fast-tracked me onto uh, not making a lot of mistakes that could have happened you know and so mm-hmm. You know, and it's cool that you've had such a varied experience of all these different dog lifestyles because I uh I think you're gonna be really surprised at um how different coursing is and, and uh some of the questions you may have, I I can definitely answer some of them. And and this would be a great time too, because you know, we're on air and people can kind of glean in if there's any young people coming up. But one of the reasons I wanted to bring you on is because 
you know, we all started somewhere. And and to me, the start is like one of the most exciting parts of this entire lifestyle. You know, it's, tr- it's trying something new. It's really exciting. And um, when I started, I was kind of like you. I had no idea there was even a coursing community out there. I had no idea, you know, any of this was even a thing. I thought I was kind of like resurrecting this ancient thing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so uh, I was pretty surprised when I found out there's people that have been doing it for like ever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I kind of wanted to... Uh, well, what are you looking forward to most? But let me ask you that because that's what. What are your big dreams with those two right now? This is a this is a good time to ask this, and you're gonna listen to this in five years and be like, "Wow, either this was true or man, I have changed my mind a lot." <laughs> I I just want to go out when I have the time and uh, give it an um, honest effort. The with these dogs, the way they're bred, the, these two pups, that. <clears throat> it, they're the rock stars of, of coursing or hair in a little bit of rough terrain mm-hmm. that where I'm at. So I, it, it, you're saving me so much time because in my mind with that lurcher that I have, I was thinking, already thinking like, do I, I need to find something across or to it, Like I was trying to develop my own breed for this country mm-hmm. and, and knowing you now, you saved me years of frustration to figure this out and i i know cur dogs i know hound dogs uh, fairly well but side hounds like i said only had that one and two with the lurcher um like the uh, other than the basics of your sh- shot and deworming programs that all dogs need all puppies need mm-hmm. but st- struck because their structure is so different than hounds and curs I, I had a lot of questions to you, what, how to go about the feed programs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But in the future, I really see myself with these dogs going out and making several runs with, if the weather's permitting and uh, really catching some hairs. Let me ask you something. Did you grow up shooting jackrabbits like with a 22? Like I definitely did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Did it blow you away the first time you sent a dog after one, how hard they are to catch? Yes, absolutely. Those, those things are like a scud missile. I mean, <laughs> heck yeah. yeah. Like for instance, yesterday I, I had my little, my older pack that is not a true <laughs> hair, but I want to do it so bad. And I admire my hunting dogs that I got. So mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to give it hell. You can have a good time (laughs) until my puppies are up and old enough, you know, and and it'll just blow them out of the water. But I'm still going to I'm not just going to sit in my pockets and not do anything because I'm heck. Yeah, I I enjoy hunting dogs so much. I don't care if it's a chihuahua. (laughs) Heck yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So uh, like yesterday, I, I jumped a jackrabbit and this jackrabbit, he like he was kind of a cocky jackrabbit. He just kind of hop, hop, you know, for yep. about 30, 40 yards thinking, nah, nobody's chasing me. Well, that border bull and that lurcher got hot on his heels. And then he, he hit several more gears. <laughs> they do that. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's the thing too, when they come up, they're hopping, it's called flashing where they're kind of like, I'm so strong. Don't mess with me. Like Mm -hmm. nobody even think about chasing me. Cause I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but they'll do that to coyotes. And I've seen them many times do that to coyotes. And the coyote is like, no way. Like I'm not even going to try it. It's not even worth my time. And so the thing that blew me away, it wasn't just their top speed. Cause I've always seen jackrabbits run away from me, but it was never with those, with their ears down, just flooring Mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? But it's also their agility is insane. Like, I don't know if that, um, I don't know if your lurcher is fast enough to actually turn them, but when my dog started turning them, I was just like, whoa, I mean, this animal is running 40 miles an hour and is turning on a dinner plate circumference area. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Man, yeah. when you start catching them, you're going to be elated. Like, yeah. because when you first start, you know, there's that, that there's that kind of evolution of all hunting, right? And I know you've been through with every species you've gone after, but for me, they are so difficult to actually catch that the first time you catch one, you're going to be like insane. Mm-hmm. You're going to just be elated because it's, it's, they're just really hard to catch. Yeah. I remember mine, they jump them. They were little babies and I didn't really know any better. Um, they'd get outrun and I was like, man, like, can my dogs do it? 
And then when they got around 13, 14 months, they were just mowing them down. And I was like, oh, my goodness, they can do it. Yes. Like, I got a good pack of dogs. And it's so validating. You know, it's it's really fun. I, I love I love those memories a lot. And that's yeah. why I was really excited to have you on, honestly. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited. Uh, these pups are going to be really amazing. How are you raising these pups? That's what I was going to ask you. So like, what, what, what do you got in mind to kind of train them? Do you, do you have any ideas or are you going to just kind of lean on? I, I got, an, I got a, an idea and normally my, my other dog hunting dogs growing up lived in kennels or on a, on a chain. I don't like chains so much anymore. Um, I like good kennels, but <clears throat> I think you got to have a really good personal bond with your hunting dog. I don't care what kind of hunting dog it is. I, yeah, I think I there is, that's very important. When I was younger, I probably didn't have that so much. Uh, but as I got older, I, I realized that you really need to have a bond with them and a, a good handle. They need to be trained. I, I have one of my pit bulls and I'm sure everybody will call BS on this, but my, I had a pit bull that I can down sit, stay, uh, spit him out on command i didn't have to have a break stick i didn't have you know i didn't have to repeat myself nothing i mean it was he was very i put a lot of hard work and time with that dog and uh, i just wanted to prove not only to myself but other people that it can be done and uh, he worked really good for me but with these pups i'm i'm their house i'm breaking them to be house dogs and some people have different opinions about that. But um, my wife and I just love these little dogs. Uh, I just, we got a good bond already going on. Um, I'm going to have them heal and sit and stay. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and uh, at the proper time, they're too, to me, you can put too much pressure on, on a little pup. Oh, totally um, agree. Yeah. So I let them I'm be just, puppies for a while. Honestly. Yeah. I'm going to let them, I'm going to let them grow up and with my past experience, just let them be puppies for a little while. And then later on adolescent time, it's, it's business. You'll be amazed how important heel is. I train all my sight hounds heel. And what I love about heel is, is, you know, sometimes when you're walking, you'll want to have them what's called on slip which is a rope that or a leash that's tied to your body or in your mm -hmm. hand secured to your wrist. And then it goes through their collar loops through it. And then you hang on to the other end so that when you see a hair, you just let go of the rope. And since it's fastened to you, they take off. Right. Oh, okay. And, and yeah. so uh, that way, if you're hunting in an area with like lots of coyotes or antelope or deer, that way you can keep them right here. You know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, uh, if they heal, they're not pulling your arm out of the socket all day, which is really, right. really nice. And, and mm -hmm. so, um, I also, you know, t really focus on recall because when you're on foot, they're going to catch a, a hair a mile and a half away from you. And so they're mm -hmm. going to be looking for you carry a really loud whistle. Uh, I use, I can whistle loudly, but it's still not enough. That sound does not carry. There's a, there's a whistle called the storm whistle. It's like this orange whistle that you can blow and a dog can hear that thing like three miles away. I'm not exaggerating. It's so loud. I plug mm -hmm. my ears when I use it and that way they can hear you when they're coming back. And so, and, and if they have a good handle, they want to come back, you know? Mm -hmm. So right. nothing right. is more frustrating than when a sight hound takes off running with another pack and one dog is just like, nah, I'm just going to keep hunting. And they're a mile out there and then they just start hunting from there. And you're mm -hmm. like, no, no, no return first we'll hunt together you know <laughs> oh gosh it makes me insane i go livid i, oh, I guess yeah. that's one that's one tip i would give is um make sure your dogs have great recall because to me and, and everyone has their own hunting style so i'm just saying my personal preference i can't stand when dogs when sight hounds are hunting like 100 or more yards away from me and you have one out there that's out sniffing around and he jumps a rabbit by himself and all your other dogs are close by that's ruined I mean, now they're going to yeah. have to try to gain all that ground to get on that rabbit. And it's just stupid. So in my opinion, you, that you're on the right path. I mean, having, having heal and come is going to be one of the best commands ever for those yeah. dogs. Yeah. And, and another um, aspect of it as uh, getting into this, I, I was counting my pennies and just, well, I have the lurcher. I'll just get one more, one pup. That's more of a hair dog and see how it works. Well, the more I thought about it, that's, that's, I'll be banging my head against 
the truck. Why didn't I just go? There was a little bit litter there. They're proven good genetics. Yep. Why not get to, they get raised up the same. They have the same speed and agility, the same instinct, everything. Yeah. That, that was a good call. That, <laughs> I, I, I'm really glad I took your advice on that. And it's, it's working really good so far. How many times do you hound doggers catch yourself thinking about an awesome hunt you had or retelling this great story with family and friends around the dinner table and all you have to remember that moment is some terrible cell phone picture or worse, no picture at all? Well, Houndsman XP has partnered with Rough Cut Company to help solve your problem and make beautiful pieces of art to remember for all time your experiences in the field. Rough Cut Company is an American-owned and American-made business in Wisconsin that specializes in custom, unique photo engravings on hardwood that are framed to any picture you want. They also do customizable antler dog chews and even beautiful, unique antler rings from their own red deer in Wisconsin. Rough Cut Company can do pretty much anything you ask. Their customer service is second to none. Give them a look at roughcutcompany.com. And when you check out, make sure you check out with HXP 10% off to get a discount on your final purchase. Check them out, you guys, and support people that support Houndsmen and help keep us in the field and remembering those times forever. I just want to give a quick thanks shout out to, to all these people that help, you know, uh, A, are my friends and B, just kind of, are are open to talk about these experiences. So, yeah. You know, I <clears throat> it was so awesome talking to him cuz it was like me being in a time portal going back and 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 listening to myself kind of in a lot of ways. Minus all his experience beforehand. So, and when he talked about his hot blood just running out on those coastal fields of South Texas, he was like I just was blown away at how fast those dogs are. And I just remember the first time I saw a sighthound <clears throat> excuse me really open up it's just insane and so it was really exciting so anyway he sounds like he's gonna have fun. yes he's he is fun i yeah. uh shamelessly was like bro we gotta run <laughs> so, <laughs> there was no there wasn't even a hesitation from my um uh solicitation <laughs> there you will. Go. There you go. yeah so Anyway, Chad, I kind of hogged the mic for this episode. Brother, you got anything else to say? Not really, man. Just I'm just pumped. Looking forward to it. You know, Me like, too, man. Everything's everything's going. Uh, I guess I got my got my, my little trip. Um my little bird hunting trip coming up. And then after that, uh uh, you know, duck season should be right around the corner and then and then bear season opens back up for a little while and we're going to pour into lions and bears, you know, or not bears, but pour into lions, you know, and nice. I might, and, and of course, you know, uh, as soon as it's cool enough, I'll be running rabbits more, you know, yeah. so that's great. I think I might skip falconry this year, man. And just focus on, I, I got a lot of new dogs. I got a lot of new dogs this year. I got my two Salukis that I want them to get started right. You know, and I could start them with a, with a hawk or a falcon. And that's what I wanted to do and still want to do, but I think getting them started the right way and then mm-hmm. pushing up going the cockers, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, those two Salukis with Daryl are going to be deadly, son. I can't wait. I can't wait. Those well, I, da, That crew is going to mow yeah. you down some rabbits. I am pumped for you. And I'm going to come up there and watch, man, because mm-hmm. I'm telling you right now, two speed, one Saluki or two Saluki, one speed. Mm-hmm. Adios, rabbits. Adios. That's that's. I can't wait. I can't wait. We'll have plenty of video footage of that. Count on it. We'll yes, have some video sir. for that. For that. You're, you're going to be spurring Big Red. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. You're going to want to see that. Rodney, action. Rodney, 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 Rodney. Oh. Big Red, Big Rod's who you'll be on. That, be, <laughs> oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that'll, cool. that'll be your 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 horse there. It, but he's big. Dang, he's big. You know, like so. But you can get on him. I got some shorter buddies that have trouble getting on him. Uh, I'll get but, there. I'll jump yeah, up on him like Legolas. There. there you go. <laughs> so, and uh, I can't wait, man. But the, again, so turn them Salukis on, and then polishing off Jolene the Cockers, 
um, bird dog training. I kind of got caught up with some other things and didn't quite finish her off right. And then um, Dandy, uh, I plan on starting him this coming week. You know, like he's got his woe. Oh, Dandy, and all that. So, so, so between those, you know, four young dogs, you know, and then doing right by the veterans, you know, I think, I think I might just skip a falconry of the year this year. But at the same time. Come November, I might just say, ah, yep, and I got them started the way I wanted to. Time to get a bird. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. Regardless, I can't wait. We got all. I'm kinds of fun. secretly excited to um, have you run those dogs without the bird because you'll get to see what they're really made of. And I swear by that all the time. I'm kind of taking my own medicine now because a lot of people say like, oh, what do what do I do? I want to do falconry. I wanna, you know, and I find out what they want to hunt, what they have. You know, what you want to hunt doesn't matter. What do you have? You know, yeah, and then how can a dog help that out? Because it does. It it improves everyone's falconry. It doesn't matter basically what you're doing. There's a few things, but just about every form of falconry can be improved with a dog. And then, but I always tell them just make make the dog, you know, because you can train 15 birds with that one dog. You know, yeah, dog's gonna be around for a while. They're great for it. So train your dog, teach it to be a hunting dog first, and then teach it to be a falconry dog. And that's not the only way to do it. I've done the other, but that's definitely, in my opinion, the way you get a just a well-rounded dog, you know. Um, so this will this this will be me taking my own stinking medicine and making the Salukis and Daryl coursing dogs first, and then you know learning how to be a part of a falconry dog team as well. So, dude, and uh, if you have the space without the rocks, you toss that hot blood into the mix. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a yeah. that's a conversation we're gonna go too deep down that hair hole so we're gonna instead we'll call it with that for me blabbing about your dream team here because you got an exciting young crew coming up that's gonna serve you very well so i'm very pumped bring them down here i got thirteen thousand acres of a pool table for them to try to smoke one down on so that will be awesome too <laughs> there's absolutely no chance i won't make it down there as long as you're, you're still willing i will oh i will team you know see races watch rabbits get run yeah. down oh call me <laughs> i'm in yeah. so good. hey brother that's all i got man this has been a, a great month and hey we got a good month coming up you guys next we got a well should we let the cat out of the bag yet or should sure. we keep it a surprise we got a hog of you, you can put a teaser you can put a teaser out there how about that we got a hog of palooza next month this month was me next month is chad so mm-hmm. If you guys like Chad's um, soothing baritone, <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. There's some, there's some squeaky wheel in there, if, too. If you, you like know? Chad's uh, cats mating underwater voice, then yeah. you're going to yeah. enjoy next month. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, no. thank you so much, buddy, for joining me this month. No problem, bud. That was a blast. Let's sound them hard and treat them like heroes. Mm-hmm.